Okay, good morning, everyone. No, no good morning. Okay, <laughs> now you, know, you can hear me, I think. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, so, first of all, naturally, thank, uh, thank you very much to the organizer for inviting me here and for you know, giving me the opportunity to, to explain a bit uh, uh, this idea, this very simple idea where I would like to, uh, to work on in the next, uh, in the next days. So, I'm, uh, I'm working mainly in metagenomics. Uh, in the company I work, and I've spent like the last uh, four years as well in working on metagenomics and uh, metagenomics related experiments. So uh, but, uh, the basic idea of metagenomics, I think you all already uh, know about that, but it's just to, to extract all the DNA from a community of microorganisms. Um, mainly we work on, uh, on uh, human gut, and uh, to sequence, to, to perform shotgun sequencing, uh, over this community and to, to extract relevant information. So to try to identify genes and relevant piece of, uh, of um, uh, gene sequences that can be uh, relevant in terms of detecting what is, which is the composition, so the taxonomy of the, of the community and also with, uh, what are the functional information and the functional uh, um, capabilities and possibilities of a microbial community and how this information changes according to diseases or to different conditions. So, um, normally when we perform shotgun metagenomics uh, in uh, experiments, we, we end up having uh, literally tens of thousands or even millions, in most cases, uh, gene sequences that need to be analyzed and processing. Uh, so these genes, the, the usual workflow is to take all these gene sequences and uh, align these sequences against uh, several uh, functional databases, both of uh, containing genes and protein sequences. Uh, to try and identify which, which uh, are the genes into, into a microbiome and what they do. And these databases are typically in uh, Uniprot or CAG or, or more recently uh, the Agnog databases from MBL uh, that has been uh, updated very nicely. Uh, for, for my experience uh, in the past, uh, the most painful part uh, starts from here on. So the rest is, is uh, in metagenomics, uh, you know, sequencing, we have Illumina is, is very, very nicely uh, managed. <laughs> and the, the pipeline to perform uh, assembly, meta-assembly, and uh, um, high throughput alignments, OK, they are already there. The functional part, the functional uh, analysis part, is the part that is more, more uh, critical uh, in terms of the outcome of, the, of an experiment. But uh, at the same time, is the, mo the most painful part. Because there is where uh, you have to do very um, manual work a lot of manual work and that can take weeks depending on, on the size of the experiment and you have to continually uh, try to, to uh, move from one database to another to try to integrate all the information and to connect all, all uh, the genes and proteins information of an experiment to get out your functional information what is relevant for you for your experiment and uh, in my experience on the experience in with the, of the teams I've, wor I've been working with uh, Going from protein to pathways, which, oops, what happened? Okay, <laughs> no idea, sorry. Uh, so going from protein to pathways, which seems like, a, well, like an easy task, is not that always that easy. It depends on uh, the databases we use and the information we want to extract. And uh, directly related with, uh, with this community. So from the, from, from the perspective of, of a bioanalyst or a bioinformatician which has no experience at all with semantic web or SparkQL, uh, SparkQL is not really really an option for, for a bioanalyst to, to uh, at that, this moment uh, especially, uh, to, to retrieve all the linked data. So uh, the idea is, uh, is uh, of this, uh, of this uh, simple application we would like to, to uh, develop in the next days or to prototype in the next days is just to build a, a system that can help us having all the um, relevant linked data uh, that are available for a single protein that came out from a metagenomics experiment. That means uh, basically retrieving all the gene ontologies, pathways, and literature that are associated with the protein, protein sequence or a gene. Uh, we would like to design a simple uh, interface to hide the SparkWell uh, querying engine uh, to get this information out and present this information in, a, in an easy way to a bioanalyst, so a person that has no experience at all in, in doing Sparkle query. And uh, if possible, we would like to, to um, include also uh, some nice visualization uh, 
tools and statistical tests if, if we have time and if we, if we are successful. So this is just a very, very uh, simple scheme that uh, I like to, to, to show you to, to present the general idea. So starting from, from a protein list and uh, if possible also with, with quantitative information that come out of, of a quantitative metagenomics experiment uh, to feed this information into, into this simple app and uh, perform the Sparkle query against uh, different uh, endpoints and combining all the, all the information together and present this information in a nice and simple, very simple way. So tables with, uh, with uh, literature information or even better to, to use the quantitative information, the quantitative data associated to each, to each gene or to each protein in the data set to, to plot and to visualize uh, uh, this quantitative data in a nice way according to, to the design of the experiment. So what, what we need in terms of, uh, of uh, the BioHackathon community is really to, to, uh, to have help in uh, uh, going from protein IDs to metabolic pathways and reactions. And I'm not talking about just the uh, reactome uh, or, or the other databases that are just uh, you know, very well um, represented into endpoints, but especially the MetaSeq and BioSeq databases, which for the people working in metagenomics and in, in, in the, the metabolomics uh, uh, field is, 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 very, is very important, is, is a reference database. Uh, and of course, the CAC pathways and all the literature, the literature data. Uh, one thing uh, that we need to, uh, to, to, to understand is, is, is uh, uh, if we already have all the information there, so um, check with, with the community if all we need is, is already there. I think most of the information is already there, but it's possible that some links are not already there. So from moving from one database to another or to uh, some, some links or cross links across different data sets may not be already there. And that would be, would be nice to discuss and, and see how, how, we can, well, how we can manage it, how we, how we can move forward, or if we can implement you know, or add new data into the, into the endpoints uh, from, this, from this point of view. So this is the, the very um, well, the proposed work plan for the five days of the hackathon for this, for this work. So uh, one thing will be like, like day zero <laughs> at the top is to identify the best entry point this, uh, for, for, to perform the query. This may seem trivial probably for most of you because you, you know very well all the endpoints and you probably can already have, uh, get out all this information with, uh, with uh, a very well-defined Sparkle queries. But from the perspective of someone, of a bioanalyst or a bioinformatician that is dealing with this data, it's very important to know which can be the most effective entry point to perform a query. So is it better if I get out if I have uh, my, my, my sequences, my, my sequences coming out from a metagenomics experiment, uh, what is the database of protein database that can give me the, the, the right entry point, the, the most information that I can use from that point to perform a query and get all the, the other information I need? Is it Uniprot? Is it the CAG orthologs? Is, is it another database? So that, that's quite important for, for, for me, for us, for the people working in this, in this, uh, in this uh, application. To, to understand, to, to know in this information, because really can, can affect not just only the, the queries that we per, can perform, but actually uh, the, the bioinformatics analysis that it uh, performed upstream, okay, before generating and having uh, the simple list of proteins IDs. So for the rest of the days, the first day, we will gather all the relevant information from the community. So if you're interested in this project, you can come and talk to me, otherwise I will come and talk to you, so don't worry. <laughs> And, uh, and we start testing queries, Sparkle queries, to get all the data. Uh, from the second uh, and the third and fourth day, we will design the query engine and the, the interface. We will probably start with a simple prototype using AirShiny web, uh, web server, which is very simple, powerful, and can get us up and running uh, uh, quite, uh, quite fast. And uh, we basically work on the development of the interface and the query engine for, for the rest of the, of the week. And the last day we perform some tests and wrap up. So that this is just uh, the proposed uh, work plan. But of course, if people will join and, and contribute, we can we can change the plan and and add, add other things. So what we expect in terms of outputs from this uh, this simple prototype will be from the tech uh, side to have uh, uh, the right information to explore the genotology pathways and literature data for for a protein list. 
and to have, uh, of course, uh, some nice visualization tools and, uh, and, uh, uh, and plots uh, to perform uh, uh, also uh, enrichment analysis or other ontologies or pathways. Um, but more importantly, to have a dynamic uh, Sparkle query engine that can really leverage the information that it's already there in the endpoint and, then, and that can, uh, you know, help us because if the endpoints uh, evolve through time and more information is put in, if, you, if we have a, a dynamic query engine, we can always be assured to get out the, the most uh, relevant and updated information. Uh, and this is, uh, of course, a thing that is not doable if you just work uh, with the static files. Uh, that you can download from a database and import in your application. So we really want, want, would like to have a query engine to do that because that's, that's the point of having a semantic web and leveraging the semantic web. And of course, more importantly, from the biological point of view, so from the people that uh, could, could be interested in, in having such a tool to, to explore uh, the data and to perform a biological interpretation of the data, is to have a really, you know, a, a simple, very simple, uh, system to explore functional information from a metagenome experiments in terms of biological processes, metabolic pathways, and enzymes content of a microbial community. And uh, of course, we would like to, to, to st stick to the simple uh, things, to, so simplifying data mining and interpretation, and interpretation of this information uh, for the people, again, uh, once, uh, once more, for the people not having uh, uh, technical skills of uh, capabilities of possibilities to perform uh, Sparkle queries against the endpoints. So that's it, and thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>